calling in the light to be with us now, grounding in our intention, awakening and uplifting. We call in sacred space. We ask for our higher selves to be in charge. We ask for all the energy and information that comes through to be in the highest good of all concerned, what we most need at this time and what we're ready for. Today we're gonna to be working with the Monet Key and we're going to be discussing the healer's rights, which is the first right of the Monet Key. start by lighting a candle. If you have candles, I encourage you to light yours as well. Monaki is a path of fire. My name is Alicia McNaughton and I am the founder of the Mystical Institute of Healing Arts. We're also going to work with some offerings, some blessings. So this is a quick light coal. I don't know if you can see it sparking yet. Let's see if I can turn it. People always ask me how to use this, so you can see it goes pretty quickly and then you want to put it down before the sparks reach your finger. <clears throat> and we're going to be working with some incense that I get from Ecuadorian hands. And it's all ethically harvested from dead trees and the trees are replenished and replanted and we are helping with fair trade the people at the bottom of the Andes mountain where the Monaki comes from in Peru. So this is a blend that I make. And this helps to clear the space when we, when we bring this in. This is something that I call sacred smoke and I sometimes offer it for my students. This has frankincense and palo santo and cobalt and a little bit of white sage from my garden. And so we're just bringing that in. I learned how to use white sage as a child where I was invited to join a community of Native Americans who taught me how to work with sage at a place called The Gathering. I was 11 years old at the time, so it was, I was very honored to be there. And I was taught how to work with the medicine of sage for, for cleansing. And so, we would take the feather and wash ourselves in the smoke. To the winds of the south, a great serpent, wrap your coils of light around us. Teach us to shed the past the way that you shed your skin. To walk belly to belly on the earth of the mother. Teach us the beauty way. Aho. To the winds of the west, mother jaguar, protect our medicine space. Teach us the way of peace to live impeccably. To walk softly on earth. Show us the way beyond death. Aho. To the winds of the north, hummingbird, ancient ones, grandmothers, grandfathers, come warm your hands by our fires. We honor those who have come before us and those who will come after us and our children's children. Aho. To the winds of the east, great eagle, condor, 
come to us from the place of the rising sun. Teach us to fly wingtip to wingtip with great spirit. Teach us to fly high to mountains we only dare dream of. Protect us, keep us under your wing. Aho. Pachimama, Mother Earth, we are here for the honoring of all of your children. The stone people, the plant people, the four-legged, the two-legged, the creepy crawlers, the fin, the furred, the winged ones, all of our relations. Aho. Father Sky, Grandmother Moon, to the high frequency star nations, archangels, ascended masters, and great beyond, thank you so much for bringing us here and allowing us to sing the song of life. The sacred space is now open. All right, so it is my great honor to have this platform and this time together for us to be able to work with this beautiful energy that was gifted to us. From the Andes Mountains through Alberto Beloldo, who brought this over after spending 10 years in the Amazon and was given permission to bring this to us. And I'll show you a picture of the mountains there and some of the sacred sites. This is Machu Picchu in Peru. And I really want to say that I'm honored that you're here and that you've answered the call of your soul to receive these transmissions, to learn about these transmissions, to be here online with me in spirit. We ask that these transmissions that are being brought forward are protective, healing, nurturing, safe, and I'm asking for them to be readily available as we are stepping up. Just as the prophecies spoke about, there's a prophecy of the ancient Americas about a period of great transformation that foretell of a new human appearing on the planet. Persons of wisdom and power who live free of fear and abide in their elemental nature, homo luminous. And that's a quote. I'm going to be reading directly from this book. You can download this from our Facebook group. And the name of our Facebook group is Monanke Wright Mystical Institute. And you'll see a picture of me there. My name's Alicia, Alicia McNaughton. So you can download this entire book. All right, and then you can receive the transmissions virtually. Spirit can move with our intention directly to you and give you these transmissions. And I've experienced it online. I've also experienced it in person. And I have a lot of other mystical trainings that I'll be talking about in our school. A uh, little background on me. So I started off as a holistic health practitioner. I hold many certificates in the arts of herbalism, in acupressure, in um, nutrition. And we started working with Reiki there. We started learning about five element theory. We started to connect with, you know, the meridian lines in the body. We started to learn about the chakras. We, we learned how to ground ourselves. We learned Tai Chi. We learned a lot of different uh, base, had a really nice base working with that medicine. And working with that medicine and being in meditation, I started to actually have visions and memories of past lifetimes. Um, as a medicine woman and I would go into the redwood forest and the trees would start talking to me and they would start helping me to have memories of where we learned how plants can heal and how you can commune with the elementals and the spirits in the forest there and learn about the medicine and the wisdom that the earth has for us and I did also train officially with the Monaki many, many years later. I also have many, many certificates and multiple metaphysical trainings, um, transfocal channeling being one of them, multi-dimensional healing, working with past lives in the Akashic records. I, I hold many certificates as a Reiki master teacher. I've been teaching for well over 10 years at my school here in person and virtually. So I've acquired 
a lot that I want to share with people and people ask me to share what I know with them and this is the best way that spirit can offer this so that it's readily available right when you need it. Otherwise it would take me many years to cover all the material and people would have to wait many years before they could learn what they need to learn. So this is going to be given to you so that you can receive it when you need to at your own pace in the comfort of your own home. And my intention is when we call in the four winds that we're also asking for your houses to feel that protection, to feel the blessing, to bless the land, to call in the energy of the Andes into your medicine room where you're watching this. So I'm honored you're here. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what the Monaki means. So the Monaki is your invitation to dream an entire new world into being. And that's a quote from Alberto Valdo. The Monaki writes, transform and upgrade your luminous energy field. And you'll see that written throughout the literature as LEF, which stands for luminous energy field. And they are energetic transmissions that heal the wounds of the past, the karmic and genetic programming, and the beliefs that you inherited. They reinform your DNA, enabling you to grow a new body that ages differently, heals differently, and even dies differently. It is a blessing for seven generations forward and seven generations backwards. So this energy moves up and down through time, through your bloodline, and you do share DNA with your family. So congratulations on being one of the members of your family that's gonna be bringing light into your bloodline. It's very appreciated. So the Monaki comes from Quetcha, and it's a word that means I love you. The Monaki rites are an initiation to become a person of wisdom and power who has accepted the stewardship for all creation. The Monaki is an invitation into who we are becoming 10,000 years from now. So we'll be working a lot with our future selves. So the rites are common to all shamanic traditions, even though they are expressed in different forms and styles in different cultures. The rites are a process for healing the wounds of the past from our own personal past and from our ancestors. The genetic and karmic inheritance that we were born with in this life, too. So these rites derive from great initiation from the Hindus Valley and were brought to the Americas by the first medicine women and men who crossed over from Siberia around some 30,000 years ago. And they are called the Laika, the earth keepers of old. So the Laika felt that the people would come to the Monaki when they were ready and felt a calling to do so. And so many of you who are here today have also felt a calling and a longing to make a difference in the world and in your life. And so I'm really, really glad that you're here. I'm really grateful that you're here. I'm really grateful that the Monique has blessed my life, my lineage. I have felt so many benefits from this. I want to give this to as many people as possible. Um, once you receive the Monique rites, you will go through a transformation process. Um, the transformation is a cleansing, it's a healing, and you're going to be receiving this energetic wisdom, this energetic download, and they want you to not get very stuck on what it is that's processing through you and analyze it in a, in a cognitive, therapeutic way. They want you to allow the memories and the energy to just start to move out and for the new wisdom and the new energy and the cleaner energy to start to move into your chakras, clearing out psychic residue and sludge and bringing in rainbow light. So when, when we're healed and when we are working at an optimal level, when your luminous light body, your rainbow light body is activated, 
you can see all the colors of the rainbow reflected back, you know, through your chakras being clear. When your chakras are not clear and you have psychic sludge and residue from karmic imprints and wounds and traumas and things inherited and stuff that we brought over from past lifetimes, it can show up in the energy body and the energy matrix looking gray. Um, and it's, it's also much, much cleaner for your health when we can lighten and brighten. So the Monarchy includes nine shamanic rites of passage and initiation. So further classes will be offered to teach all nine of the rites. These include the day keepers rites, the wisdom keepers rites, the earth keepers rites, the star keepers rite, the creators rite. There's also a seers rite. There's the protective bands of power and the harmony rites. And when the men were working with Alberto Valaldo, that's what they were teaching him. And when the women were working over here, they were doing the 13th rite of the womb. So that's also something that we we're going to bring in. Since then, there have been other shamans after they have received the nine initiation, which is all about the future energy and what we're bringing in and the rites to come have brought through more of the star rites, which will be given as well in future classes. So you wanna give yourself time to integrate. Uh, different people need different amounts of time. It depends on how much you're healing and how much you're clearing or how used to the process of energetic cleansing you are. So there is, what we go through is this 21 day, month long, sometimes week long process where you receive all this light and it starts to move the energy out that needs to come out, which we become um, conscious of. So what was stuffed and compartmentalized is now reaching the surface and we're becoming more aware of what we've been holding on to. And during that process, our bodies need a lot of water. We need to eat alkaline foods. We need to watch processed foods and eat organically and watch our intake of chemicals and really allow the energy that our bodies have to work through what we're clearing rather than working on digesting foods that are not as easy to digest, right? So you wanna drink a lot of water. It's good to take herbs like milk thistle if uh, you wanna nourish your liver and support your liver, which is filtering out all these toxins, right? You don't wanna eat a lot of food right before you go to bed so that your body can actually process and, and recalibrate. So that's important. And feelings will come, feelings will come up. So if there's feelings that have been suppressed, then those feelings will have another opportunity to be expressed, to be embraced, to be journaled, to be reevaluated, to be honored for the experiences that created those feelings. And what we're doing is we're bringing in a higher point of view to um, our karmic debts, our injuries, our traumas, the things that have happened in our, in our stories, in our families. And we're learning about them and we're seeing it through a higher perspective. And we're also connecting with the wisdom of the Lycas. So you're going to be supported through this and I encourage you to call in your own sacred space when you're doing these healing processes particularly with the healers rights the healers rights is going to bring you into a healing process yourself so when we call in the four directions or the four winds like we did at the beginning of class you're opening up the right medicine for that particular day for that particular person if that person is you, you're calling it in for you. If it's somebody else, you're calling it in for them. Once you're done with the healing process, you wanna read the four directions again and close down the portal, the vortex, closing sacred space. But right now we're gonna keep it open. As we're learning about the Monaki energy, it's part of the healing process is learning about it. So, while you're learning about it, oftentimes we're feeling the energy behind the words and what we're about to experience. So the actual transmission of the Monet Key Rites is going to be on a separate video that you can watch. 
okay but I'm going to talk to you about how to give the right so it's it's nice to understand the medicine in your own system before you give it away so we want to wait at least you know three to four weeks before we start to give and offer the rights to another person and the rights are a beautiful blessing and they can be given to children um, often they were for a rite of passage on a birthday or when a person gets to a certain place and, and it's time for them to go off and find themselves and go off on their own vision quest so to speak these are really good times to bring in these initiations and these blessings to assist people in doing that. You always wanna have permission. You always wanna ask right before, do I have permission to give you the healer's right? And when that person says yes, they're gonna be calling that in for themselves. And then the medicine, energies, the organizing principles of creation, the shamans of the past will come in and support and give these transmissions. Person to person, spirit to person, um, I'll read a little bit about the healer's rites and I'll show you some pictures of the Lycans here and they call themselves the Earth Keepers. And this is the first of the foundation rites of the Monaki. The healer's rite connects you to a lineage of luminous beings from the past who come to assist you in your personal transformation. Awakens the healing power in your hands so that everybody that you touch is blessed. There is tremendous spiritual assistance available. And these luminous ones work in our sleep to heal the wounds of the past and our ancestors. I've given these to many people and as a clairvoyant, I have the, the privilege and the blessing to see these different groups of ancestors come in depending on your soul history. And it's a really beautiful thing to witness. I've seen, um, you know, spirit, friends of theirs who, who need to come in and experience the medicine that are in their direct lineage. I've seen past lifetimes of people who have history with working with shamanic medicine and different forms of healing work and different sacred sites around the world that are connected to them. Um, it's always slightly different. And then I always definitely see, you know, the Monanke tribe that are holding space for what they call the shamans of the West that they want to give this to so that we can have an awakening over here. And they've been holding this medicine sacred there and holding space for this to happen. They want this to happen. They simply ask that we don't charge for the right specifically. They, it's okay to charge for your counseling, for your time, for rent, for you know video, equipment, things like that, but the rights themselves are given freely, and that's their request. And there's interesting ways of exploring that for yourself. Um, you know, it's, it's my understanding and my belief that we just have a different form of trade in modern day culture. So in particular groups where they're they trade there's there's the shaman there's the hunters there's the hunters the gatherers there's those that make the clothing and everybody has their job and, and their community comes together quite nicely and there's there's a sense of community and family and everybody's sharing and everybody has land that's really beautiful to be able to do things that way right and then there's also you know, very famous healers who go and they travel, and when they do go and they travel and they offer their gifts freely, they are taken care of, they're they're offered dinner, they're, they're given a place to sleep, things like that. There's just this beautiful way of networking, and in today's culture, we, we use money to do that instead. So, I am honoring their culture, and it was given to me, I did pay for mine, um, but I didn't pay a lot of money. And, and traditionally, when I've gone to look into studying shamanism, it was in the vicinity of $10,000. So I was so honored and grateful to be able to receive this in such a way that it was affordable and very powerful, very powerful. Um, but I am honoring it and I am sending you these transmissions as a blessing, as a gift, as service work, as the like is intended. And this, is, this has been a gift from them that I'm privileged to just 
allow you to experience and hold space for, right? And these gifts come from spirit. So, all right. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the tools that are important to have when we're doing this work. So you'll wanna have a pie stone and you can get these in the Shaman's Market. You can get these on Etsy, shamansmarket.com, etsy.com, Amazon. I've found them on Amazon. I, I do have some here when people do come to learn from me. You can sometimes get them from me as well at the Mystical Institute of Healing Arts, right? So this one is a form of agate. It's uh, big enough for for us to be able to see on the video, and then you'll you'll probably want to get some type of a medicine bag to keep it in. Um, usually they're a little bit smaller. This one's moss agate. I have a couple of different ones that I sometimes feel called to work with, right? And this is going to represent the Taurus of the heart. So we all have this as part of our energetic anatomy your Taurus of your heart comes out like a donut all the way around you. And when we start to open and expand our luminous energy field, the idea is to really expand in our Taurus, right? So pie stones symbolically represent our luminous and radiant energy field. Our energy field becomes bright as we take better care of our energetic well-being by cultivating energy practices that support and sustain our inner and outer selves and our emotional and physical bodies. The circular shape of the stone also represents our original wholeness and the remembering of our wholeness. The pie stone is symbolic in many cultures, also representing the continuous evolutionary cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth, balance, karma, and healing. It is also integral in receiving and sharing the nine rights of the monarchy. So monarchy means love, key means energy. So I will demonstrate what it would look like to give the right. I'm just gonna make some room here. So you can do this in a chair, you can do this seated, but what it is, is you're going to be sitting face to face with your protege, is what they like to call it. And I'm going to have my pie stone in my non-dominate hand uh, when I'm doing the healer's rites. And I'm going to be sending transmissions with my dominant hand. And so the first thing that you always want to do is you always want to call in sacred space. So we called in the four winds at the beginning of our video here, so that's already been done. And then you want to ask your protege, do I have permission to give you the healer's right? And you wait for an answer and you wait for them to say yes. And every time they say yes, I see the energy and the beings coming in. It's very beautiful to watch. And we're going to do this motion where we reach up into our eighth chakra. And they call this the Veracocha, the Veracocha. And we open up this beautiful, bright, higher self energy and wrap it down around ourselves. This is very protective very beautiful, higher consciousness of ourselves. Then we put a blanket of light over our protege. And we're gonna put our hands on our hearts and we're gonna settle in. We're gonna start to feel, I always feel it like a swirling. We're feeling this transmission coming through. And then we're gonna send the wisdom of our bellies, the power of manifestation to move through us. So we're not giving them our power of manifestation. We're holding space for them to receive this monarchy transmission of power. Transmissions will take approximately 30 seconds. And the transmission is going into the person's hands. So our hand is gonna be over their hand.
Calling in the Monai love energy of the heart. We're going to receive it first from spirit. We're going to allow it to transmute any energy that we need to let go of, allowing our own energy to clear, moving down our grounding cord all the way down into Pachimama, Mother Earth. And when we're ready, we're going to send this love energy through our dominant hand into their hands. And you don't overthink it. You're just allowing the energy to move through. So my head is turned off and I'm just feeling this bliss, this angelic transmission of light. And again, this transmission is 30 seconds long, usually. all the way up into our heart we're also going to be sending in the beautiful energy of vision of intuition of clairvoyance of clarity and we're going to allow ourselves to receive it first and then we're going to bring our hand over their hands and feel the transmission moving through us to them scoop your your hands underneath their hands so their hand will be resting in the cup of your hands and we're going to blow the power to heal from the monarchy into their hands their hands into prayer position and you're going to put their hands in front of their own chest like this and you're going to let go you're going to bow out you're going to take off the blanket of energy and you're going to close Veracucha and you're going to say to them you've just been given the healers right Ask that that be given to you now as you watch the second video you may already be feeling it and we thank you all for coming to the north south east and west we release these energies to the four winds in Monet